Well, you see, this is a multi-layer question. And first of all, we have to understand one thing. So, let me say I divide the world in two parts. The first part, let me call it the old world. And I include Europe in the old world. Old in, when I say old, I mean in the sense of infrastructures. Uh, for example, Italy is a very old country, as everybody knows. The roads are very old and uh, there is a lot of monuments. So it's very difficult to build up uh, what we call the landing lines, the land lines or the land mobile phones. Uh, it costs a lot of money. You have to dig roads and digging roads uh, may cause uh, some surprise. You may find some ancient uh, uh, things, uh, so you have to stop everything. And then there is the new world. And in this I refer, for example, like uh, Taiwan, or China, or Brazil. These are new country and still developing. And in this way, especially for the size of this country, for those working into the mobile telephony, it has been more and more easy to place uh, BTS based transceiving stations everywhere. And this is why in the East, in the new developing country, mobile telephony after 1997 spread in a way that you cannot believe, really. Millions, billions of uh, new subscribers in few years, in few Yes, few years. I say from 1997 to 2002, we are talking about billions of new subscribers in India, in China, in Taiwan, got a mobile phones. In the same periods, the level of uh, emissions of mobile phones has increased almost doubles, just because the increase of population using mobile phones. Now we have to say another thing. Why mobile phones for? What people is doing with mobile phones? Now, if we compare the landlines and the mobile phones, then you will realize that in the landlines, you can do only phone calls. And this also the manufacturers realize, well, phone calls is only is not a good business. This I have to say because I've been involved also in that project. So how we can let people to stay more connected to mobile phones? And the first idea that comes in our minds, I include myself of course, is oh, text messages. We can let people to learn how to send text messages. And very nice. And this, after a while, led us to understand that young populations were very interested in texting. They were so fast and so popular textings then the second idea comes, well, text is not so profitable, what we can do? Ah, video. And so, around 2004, we begin to develop, according to the developing of the power of uh, mobile phones, and I refer to 3G, that was supporting video, firstly, that video was very successful. Wow, you can take pictures, and send the pictures and send short clips and so on. So what's happened now that we have a lot of people communicating fully with mobile phones and less physically. From one side this is also good, I'm not saying it's bad, but this required a lot of power from the station to transfer such a big amount of data here and there continuously, 24 hours per day. And this increasing amounts of emissions, of course, it began, it began to have some effects on the populations. Now, as I say, the medical studies are very controversial. Uh, somebody says, oh no, we don't have evidence that can cause any disease. And actually, um, also the one, they may say, yes, there is no evidence that cause disease, so name it disease. But yet, it influences people. In which way? We have seen uh, increasing rates, especially uh, United States uh, and Asia, of people declaring to have sleeping problems. Uh, this, 
should not be taken easily. I mean, should not be undervalued. Just you can see that in the United States, sleeping problem cost to the governments billions of dollars per year in medications. And uh, if we look only at that point of view, we would like to save money and also to save the life of the people. We should reduce the exposures of uh, radio emissions and uh, especially mobile phones emissions to improve the quality of the life of the people. Now, what's happened when we sleep less? There are many concurs, many side effects. Uh, firstly, we are less active. Our immune systems decrease in activities. Our memory decrease. There is a lot of uh, pathologies that has been uh, uh, growing, especially in children. And I refer to the uh, attention deficit disorders. Uh, after 2002, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorders in children increased in a way that wow, uh, is really shocking. Also, this is a cause for the, for the populations, for the community, because we have to pay for that. And uh, also, the quality of uh, education, not being able to understand, not being able to memorize, will create in the future trouble to these children because they are not able to understand, they are not able to learn and they need uh, extra uh, tutorial support to do the things that other children they can do normally. What I personally notice in Taiwan and especially traveling in Taipei MRT where everybody, or may say 80% of the people is using mobile phones then the, if I look at their face they look exhausted they look really exhausted. And I did not notice the same things in other big cities like Paris or London or Rome, where still people are using MR, MR, MRT. But in Taiwan, I see people really collapsing <coughs> and sleeping in MRT. That, according to me, is not a safe place where to sleep for many reasons. They may steal your things, you may not wake up at the right stations and make, wake up at the last one, so you have to go back home and get late and so on. But if you fall into sleep in such a noisy and uh, dangerous place, it means you finish completely your energy. That led me think that the energy, at the energy level, mobile phones and radiation works. They really sucks our energy. So I would prefer to keep all my energy to do better things than not sleep in the MRT, isn't it?